Hello and welcome back to Winter Bee Sailing. I'm still hanging out medward to the public pier in Makemo in French Polynesia. If you guys want to see more magic on Makemo, you can check out episodes 59 to 62. Otherwise, come with me on a magical journey of recalibrating my depth sounder. Since I'm uh, in very shallow water and on the dock right now, I've decided that it's an excellent time to calibrate my depth sounder, something I've never done. Uh, the way I calibrated it initially was by running aground a lot in the waterway when I was sailing between Virginia and North Carolina. So often I'd run aground in the channel or right next to a channel marker and that's how I knew that when my depth sounder reads 7.7 .7 feet I'm aground. Obviously I don't draw 7.7 .7 feet but I've just sort of change my brain to have that be the bad number <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is uh, get it right this time I think there's only about five feet of water under my keel right now so it's the perfect opportunity to calibrate it once and for all <laughs> for starters what is it read right now 14 feet Welcome to Winterpeace Sailing. I am single-handing my Grind 27 around the world. I started my trip in Maine with a 10-month overhaul of my boat, solo sailed through the Caribbean, the Panama Canal, 41 days alone across the Pacific, and now I'm floating around in French Polynesia, loving my life and living in the paradisey dream that I've always wanted. <laughs> On board the Gek, I have no fridge, water maker, fancy electronics, and my dinghy is a rowboat with a sail rig. Currently, uh, my videos lag a couple months behind where I am in real space and time, so if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing in my daily life, check out my Instagram, at BoatLizard. I'm joined in my adventures by fellow single-hander Jarn Schmidt. He is from Belgium. He left two years ago on his Belgian-built Spirit 32. We met in Panama a little over a year ago, and we've been buddy boating through the Pacific ever since then. So the first thing I've done is to prepare a sort of lead line, so I just put some shackles on the end of a line to weight it down, and I'm going to trail it over the side of my boat to get an exact measurement of what the water depth truly is. And I just realized I was really disgusting half rotten apple sitting next to it, which I intended to eat, but now you get to see my nasty habits. Alright, Aaron is making sure the line is hanging straight down from the boat so that I can get the correct measurement from the water surface. Alright, I've got the water depth. Now I'm just going to measure it out on my tape measure. Depth at the keel is 18 feet and 5 inches. Now I'm going to jump in the water and measure depth under keel. That's when she knew most mammals are meant to live above the water, as she wildly trashed in the vortex of swirling and suffocating. Oh, wait, she fine. It's definitely not warm in the water. The reason I measured the total depth of the water column and then the depth of the water under the keel is that I wanted to get a more accurate representation of what I draw. The last time I had measured this was before I loaded my boat down for cruising and I know that the water line has sunk a lot so I thought it was a good chance to see what I actually draw and then be able to subtract that more accurately from what the depth sounder reads so I can get the closest possible. I found that I was off by about a foot and after determining how much I draw now as a cruising boat, I decided that I prefer to know the total depth of the water column instead of the depth under the keel. It makes it easier for anchoring and I don't mind doing the little subtractions in my head. It's good, keeps me smart, you know? I have now spent several weeks in Makemo, which is longer than I ever thought I would be here, but it really captured my heart. I'm getting ready to leave and head to the next atoll, Amanu, but before I go, I want to say proper goodbye to the beautiful town and all the people in it. What I will never forget about Makemo is all the friendly smiling faces, the bicycles everywhere, the beautiful trees, painted houses, and warm welcome that we received from all the locals. difference what I 
to smell the flowers. How do they smell? Like dry. <laughs> Alright, so we are coming to the pass now and when you hit the pass at the wrong time, it's really crazy with standing waves and falls. We like to come here during the most crazy times just to see what it looks like. Although right now it looks kind of okay. from our tree was a narrow miss. Time to continue the walk to the store to buy eggs. There is definitely more on the horizon, but I think we can make it somewhere else now. Onward. This wall was built by the Atoll of Makemo to protect it from the huge waves that come in from storms. If you've noticed in a lot of my footage, the houses are on stilts. And that's because they say that the waves actually come up so high on the land that it floods it all out with waves. Makemo is wide open to the east and the south, and that's where all the strong winds come from. So they have to do a lot to protect their age getting flooded from the storms. That's why we're tucked behind the pier, because there's actually no protection from the trade winds in the east. And right now I'm sitting on the other side of the brick wall. You can see that it is just very, there's the ocean. And today's a calm day, but I can picture this in big waves just being pretty intense. So it's really cool that they were able to have the funds to fix up a wall to protect their little village. This is the road to get to the store where we buy eggs. Bonjour. to the second store. It's a little bit bigger than the first one, but not much. Second store.
This is the biggest store I've ever seen in the Tuamotus, but like most stores in the Tuamotus, it mostly consists of canned and dried goods. And this is because you can't really grow crops in the soil because it's really sandy and they get everything on planes or ships from Tahiti. So what you can see here is pretty standard for what you're going to be able to find in any large sized store like this, mostly potatoes, onions, things that last a really long time. And then when the ship comes in, you can get more freshies, but only for a couple days. Most food in French Polynesia is marked up by about 40%, so it makes trips to the grocery store a little expensive, but I've just simplified my tastes and I'm doing fine. Success. Yes. We got a cold drink as a treat. It's my new favorite, Schweppes lemon flavored seltzer water. All right, we're scoping out a new restaurant. It says pizza. <laughs> it's hard to know when these places are open. Sometimes they're just not. We are loaded up with eggs, cold drinks, and a potentially open restaurant tonight. Tomorrow we head out for Amanu. I'll definitely miss Makemo, but I'm excited to see what the next place has in store. Thanks for watching this week's video. Quick update on my solar panel situation. So there's been a lot of research going on. And what I've come to realize is that if I get the sort of panel that folds, I'm going to have to order it from somewhere that's not here. And with all the border closures and uncertain flights and cargo ships full of containers sitting in port, I'm a little nervous to order something this big from Europe or the States because I'm just not sure when it's going to get here. So I've been rethinking what I want to do for my panels. And what I've decided is to copy what Yarna has on his boat on my boat. So tomorrow night, once I've drugged Yarna into sleep, I'm going to go onto his boat and steal his stanchions and his panels and put them onto my boat. Just kidding. Um, I'm going to buy some stainless and reinforce my lifelines and stanchions, um, get some stainless tubing and little connectors on the sides, and make some solid lifelines, and then put solar panels on them that can twist up and down. I'll show you what yarns look like so you get an idea of what mine are. And that's a more permanent solution than just laying something out on the deck. And I think I can get two 50 watt panels, which will give me 140 watts total, and they'll be a little bit more easy to have up all the time when I need them, a little more permanent, and it also makes my cockpit safer because I'm going to have nice stanchions instead of flimsy little lifelines. So that's very exciting. Thank you guys for all your support and money for getting this situation going and I'm having a lot of fun designing and trying to figure out exactly what. Thank you to all of my patrons who are supporting me and making my trip possible. You guys are the best. If you would like to become a patron, my Patreon is patreon.com slash and for one-time donations, my PayPal is paypal.me slash windhippie. Links to both are in the bio. Thank you, Tish, who puts these videos from Dropbox, where I upload them onto YouTube, where you guys are able to see them. Thank you for all your lovely comments. I love reading through them all whenever I get a chance to do so. And I will see you in two weeks with another video and more solar panel updates. Hopefully by then I'll be able to have ordered some stuff from Tahiti and I can show you guys physical, tangible evidence of the goings-on in solar panel world. All right, I'll see you guys in two weeks.